So nice to meet everyone. I'm honored and very excited. Um, so let's start. So my name is Sigalit Bechler, Bechler in Hebrew. Uh, my background is in physics, electrical engineering, and bioinformatics. Today I'm a data researcher at Similar Web. I'm also working with Professor David Horn from Tel Aviv University. Professor David Horn is a theoretical high energy physicist that started working in the fields of machine learning, uh, neural network, and bioinformatics more than two, two decades ago. So I will start with a short introduction about Similar Web and then go on to describe quantum clustering, clustering algorithm inspired by physics developed by Professor David Horn and Dr. Asaf Gottlieb. So Similar Web was founded in 2007, where are more than 300 employees, six offices around the world. We provide estimates and uh, valuable marketing and business intelligence insights for more than 60 million websites and 2 million mobile apps every day. Here you can see some of the metrics we provide. For example, for websites, we provide traffic estimations. How much visits does a site have? What is the distribution of these visits among the different traffic sources, such as advertisement, link, direct uh, search, um, and social media? For mobile apps, we have all sorts of engagements with the app. Uh, this information is used especially by marketeer uh, of thousands of businesses in order to understand what's going on with their competitors and plan their online strategy accordingly. In order to provide this data, we use various sources of data, raw data and metadata. To give you a sense of the volume we handle, we process over 100 terabytes a day. So this is obviously a big data operation requiring data mining techniques, statistical and machine learning algorithms. We develop customized algorithms and uh, integrate existing machine learning algorithms into the product itself and for internal testing. So let's get into quantum clustering. But before that, I will give a short reminder or a general overview about clustering in, ge in general. So clustering is an unsupervised learning problem dealing with unlabeled data. Given elements in described in some feature space, we would like to group together elements that are similar to each other in some sense. We usually have an idea or desire what this sense should be. However, we might discover groupings and structures and patterns that we didn't think of or aimed in the beginning. So let's take an example from the web industry. Uh, here the elements are internet users and the features are the site they served. For example, here you have a male doctor. He served in CBI to read a medical uh, article. He served another site, a medical site. He served Amazon. He served his child uh, school website. You have a female doctor. You have two programmers, male and female, a scientist, and so on. Keep in mind that this is an unsupervised learning problem. The user identity is unknown, but I'm leaving it here just for the example. So a possible desire would be, to, would be to group the users by their gender. This is a strong and important uh, feature. However, we are more likely, given these sets of features, we'll, we're more likely to be able to group the users by their uh, fields of interest. Obviously, our ability to distinguish between the elements according to some sense is strongly dependent by the feature space. So what's the motivation for quantum clustering? So on the left side, you can see a relatively easy clustering task. There are three well-separated groups in the space. Most clustering algorithms will do just fine. However, on the right side, you can see a pretty complex task, com clustering task. Uh, data points are mixing together. The number of clusters is not clear at all. Um, these data points, here the data points are 700,000 pixels of a piece of art made of different materials. And the features are uh, 150 possible absorption energy indicating the uh, material type. Uh, so the dimension of the problem you probably understand is 700,000 over 150. So SVD was applied here, singular velo decomposition was applied here to, to reduce the dimension of the problem to five. Uh, the identity of the material was not known a priori, a priori and was not given to the algorithms. 
the color here uh, indicates the, the result of the clustering. Again, it was not given to the algorithm. Here you can see the process of quantum clustering. Points are moving towards the direction of their uh, clusters and they arrived in three separated strands in the, in the, in, in the space. So uh, quantum clustering was actually able to uh, find structure in a very complex absorption energy. And um, the fact that there were three different materials type was not known ahead. Uh, this case is, this is an example where uh, clustering reveals unknown patterns. So why is it important now? We are in the information area. There is a massive collection of data. There is a strong presence of outliers and unknown structure and non-trivial patterns. And quantum clustering addresses this issue, as in is, and, and it is now uh, enabled due to distributed uh, computing technology. OK, so now let's see the process of quantum clustering. You start with turning each data point into Gaussian, center around the data point. Then you, you get the sum of Gaussians. Okay, the idea behind that is that um, if you had much more, our data points are, are just a sample. If you had much more data points and you would have built a density function describing the probability of finding a data point in the feature space, this function and this sum of Gaussian uh, of course, you have to normalize, uh, will converge to each other. Another important uh, uh, aspect of the Gaussian kernel is that it prevents from spurious uh, details to appear when increasing sigma. Uh, OK, this is also this is an idea uh, came from uh, scale space theory. So the, the interpretation of the sum as a probability distribution is, a f is important for the physical formulation. As this is a density function uh, probability distribution, we can plug it into the Schrodinger equation to find the potential. The Schrodinger equation uh, is usually normally used by physicists in order to calculate uh, the, the probability distribution given the potential. This is a reverse engineering process. Given the uh, probability distribution, you, uh, you calculate the potential. Uh, in this next slide, you will understand better, I hope, I hope. Uh, so uh, we define the solution for the potential as the potential transform. This is just the second derivative of, the, uh, of this density function divided by the function itself. Then you move each data point towards the direction of the minima of the potential according to the potential surface with uh, gradient descent, for example. So what, why does it make sense? So the second, the Laplacian models the divergence effect from the cluster center. And uh, this is the noise, the outliers, everything comes inside. The, and the, the potential models the effect that binds points together from the same cluster. We may say, mathematically, it also makes sense. If you look at the, the definition of the potential, this is uh, w when we're looking for the minima of the potential, we're, we're actually looking for the places where the second derivative, the, the Laplacian, is, uh, is uh, small. We're looking for small changes in the density function and where the function itself is, uh, is high. This is exactly the definition of stability or attraction. So now when, when, now, when we're familiar with the notation of the quantum clustering, let's take another example and demonstrate quantum clustering over it. So this is the crab example. Uh, here the elements are crabs, and the feature space are four dimensions of the, of the uh, crabs. SVD was applied here in order to work in the, in the space where the, uh, they're with the highest variance. However, since also, however, although this is the space with the highest variance, it's still not clear how many groups and what are the groups that uh, exist in the data. So, now apply now turn each data point into Gaussian. This is a topographic map of the probability distribution, the sum of the Gaussian. 
Now use the potential transform. Now you can see that there are four groups, uh, and quantum clustering was able to find it with a very good uh, J-card uh, score. Um, here you can see the three-dimensional plot of the potential. The, uh, the, the result of uh, four clusters was uh, stable along a range of sigmas, which makes us confident with the result of four clusters. So quantum clustering has a built-in capability to handle outliers in the divergence part. There is no need for any, par any additional parameters but the sigma, uh, which is a soft parameter, unlike given uh, unlike strict number of clusters. Uh, the cluster may be a line or uh, another shape in the, in the, in the space, and not necessarily a point, which makes, makes it uh, capable of handling very complex data. Uh, the clusters are not defined by geometry probability consideration, but actually it is much more sensitive to changes in the um, to changes in the varia to variations in the data density. Uh, there is a, a exist exist approximated quantum clustering, uh, you know, in order to improve the time complexity. There is a possible to uh, implement it in a distributed manner. It is performed exceptionally in exposing hidden data in various fields. So uh, our next step will be actually will be to implement this in a distributed man manner, examine this algorithm on a web data, and improve time complexity, exploring approximated quantum clustering and other uh, techniques. Uh, and, of course, continue researching. There is a lot of research to be done over here. Um, and in a final word, we saw uh, two presentations how uh, uh, neuroscience inspired data mining. This is where physics inspired data mining. Uh, and this is... Uh, uh, clustering is a procedure extracted in many fields uh, in order to find structure in the data. Uh, here, physical approach actually enables to, uh, to find uh, patterns in very complex data and improve results. This is it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay.